Courts of equity have always looked at liquidated damages provisions with a certain suspicion. When they first appeared in leasehold agreements centuries ago, they often allowed landlords double damages or more if a tenant breached the agreement. The 1829 case of Kemble v. Farron involved a comedian and a theater manager, but when the comedian refused to perform, they both found that the liquidated damages clause was no laughing matter. Kemble, the manager of the Covent Garden Theater, hired Farron to perform as the principal comedian at the theater for four seasons. Kemble would pay Farron the sum of three pounds, six shillings, and eight pence per day. The contract between Kemble and Farron included a clause that if either party breached their agreement in any way, the breaching party would pay 1,000 English pounds in liquidated damages to the other party. The contract stated that this amount constituted liquidated damages and not a penalty. Farron refused to perform during the second season. Kemble sued Farron for breach of contract and sought the 1,000 pounds specified in the contract. The jury awarded Kemble 750 pounds. Kemble then moved for a judgment for the entire 1,000 pound amount. <laughs>